Welcome back to the Hater Maker YouTube channel. It's a beautiful day here in St. Helen, Michigan. Temperature's warm here at my, my shop, Hater Maker Performance. Uh, I've been doing some advertisements on some Polaris clutches locally. Uh, a lot of people gave them good reviews. Some people tried to say I was selling China slave labor clutches. Uh, those people were just the local trolls in the area. They make themselves look dumber with every post like that. And I kind of like it. Uh, that's why this is Hater Maker Performance. But anyway, uh, I had all these clutches around here. And I just wanted to do a quick video on what I see here in my repair shop. Uh, what we use for racing. What I think is a good replacement for what you've got. This is mainly Polaris and Can-Am. The only thing I don't have here is a, uh, a OEM Can-Am X3 primary clutch. Mainly because I repair those and the rebuilds last. Um, I don't see rebuilds really last in the Polaris clutches so much. Especially the 1000 clutch there. I'll go through all these. Tell you why I have them. What's wrong with them. Why I use them. Why I don't use them. Uh, so let's start Well, we'll start with secondaries This is a pro XP secondary uh, Came out of this machine right here. It's a 2020 Pro XP four-seater. That's the primary clutch for it right there uh, What I found with this and what you do find with these these are the ones with all the clutching recalls the exploding clutches uh, This one had some shrapnel go through it I still have not figured out where that shrapnel came from. I looked all in the belt case, looked for stuff missing in the clutches. Haven't found it, so I gotta do some more investigating, but uh, you can see there, in there, it's definitely had some metal banging around in it, so that's junk. This customer came in for a clutch kit. Uh, as soon as I popped the cover off and seen this, I seen why he was having some poor clutching performance. And thought he needed a clutch kit. Uh, clutching on these is just not that great from the factory. Uh, so obviously that is getting replaced. We'll go over to the primary on this machine. That's this right here. This is the older style of Polaris Turbo Primary. And that's the NA, you know, Polaris uh, XP1000, General, all that stuff. That clutch has been the same 2014 to 2023. There's a ton of them out there. I see a ton of them here because this is a you know a trail riding community uh it's not big horse i mean there is big horsepower stuff around here but there's a lot of these just 1000 na machines uh, but this is the pro xp clutch the one that's famous for exploding that had recalls from what i understand uh, the recalls mainly just check for cracks and if it wasn't cracked at that time they didn't fix it but they will crack they will break they will blow up I don't like these. Uh, there's a few companies that sell kits to convert it back over to this style clutch, and that's what I have coming for this. Uh, this is not the clutch I'll be putting on this, and I'll get to that in a minute of why. Uh, but back to the Pro XP primary clutch, uh, P90X, I believe they call these things. Same deal, this is the one that had metal go through it. I'll try to get this part of here one handed. So you see that it's junk. Uh, this one didn't blow up like they're known for. What you'll see there is usually a crack starting from around here and going out. I do not see a crack in this one currently, but these clutches are just really not good. You can see where the belt was slipping right there on it. I don't like these. Uh, they're known for blowing up even more than the really cheap China clutches. Um, I have been installing on these Polaris 1000s anyway, like these right here. I've been doing mother clutcher. This is the older generation of it right here. And this one did have some problems. This one had a weight that smoked out of it. I can show you how this one failed. Uh, there it is right there. If you can see that big old divot and that weight right there. The roller seems to spin. It wasn't locked up, but it definitely put a divot in the weight. You can see how that one there doesn't have that. So that was the failure there. Any of these clutches can fail. Mother Clutcher has improved. They've got a new casting out. I've, I'll show you on a machine over here. I just put one on. I've had really good luck with those. Uh, 
these older ones that just had the name lasered in them, you know, they were getting them from a supplier, I imagine, in China. Uh, most everything's built in China anymore. Um, we do like to see the USA on stuff, but uh, these clutches wear out. These are the worst. I don't know if I want to say they're the worst. I see the most of them just because they're the most common. Uh, they've been on everything, all players, NA 1000 stuff, you know, since 2014. Um, this one right here, this one was just <coughs> lack of maintenance. The spring was broken. That's the primary spring that was in there. This is another thing I see a lot. Uh, if you have a Polaris Razor General 1000 XP, check that nut. That nut will spin right off of there. I've seen some of the aftermarket companies actually weld it on there so it can't come off. Uh, but these clutches will fail. I just recommend people replace them when they do. I've tried to rebuild them doesn't seem to last uh the mother clutchers they even the older ones were doing pretty good i've seen some failures on them like this one but uh i'll show you this new one over here in a minute moving on right here this is the older style polaris turbo clutch uh this is not a polaris clutch this is a cheap china slave labor clutch uh just just in my experience, I've been working on stuff, automobiles and everything since I was a kid. Uh, this looks super cheap. I know you can't see it in the camera, but there is no casting marks, no numbers, no dates, no nothing. This clutch doesn't have anything on it as far as markings. It feels super cheap. I had a customer bring this in and I refused to even put it on his machine. Uh, this is super cheap junk. This is the stuff you can get, you know, on... Amazon for 150 bucks uh, Might be good to get your machine off the trail if it's broke down out there But that's about the extent I would use this kind of stuff for uh, But this is the style of clutch that I changed these p90x's over to there's conversion kits It's a little bit louder of a clutch They're kind of clackety with the way these things move around the sliders move around in that stainless slider, but They don't explode. They don't seem to fail near as much as these do and I still need to figure out what was pinging around in this. I haven't seen anything that came out of the clutch, but something was definitely going on there. We'll get to these in a minute. These are racing clutches, they're STM, TAP. These are great clutches. I mean, every clutch wears out, especially if you put it in a hot belt box. Uh, I have seen the STMs wear pretty quick uh, when you do that, but this is one of the better racing clutches. This is what a lot of the drag race guys use. This is my clutch that I use on my drag race machine. Uh, but I'll get to those in a minute. We'll go back over to the stock stuff. k and secondaries. Uh, the one failure you will see, both of these are k and secondaries. This one just has an aftermarket helix on it. Uh, the rollers fail in these. They break. Uh, this one actually has... <laughs> Yeah, you can see the pin in there. The roller's totally gone. It's broke. You can see the secondary is locked open quite a ways, and the belt was slipping on it. Going around to this one. That one's broken. It's gone. And this one. It's got a piece of the roller still left in there. You can see the broken chunk. Uh, and it's also tore up the helix pretty good on this. Customer brought this in for me to fix. Luckily, I had a good used helix that I can put in his clutch for him when I replace those rollers. The best rollers I found for these are super expensive. They're like 80, 90 bucks a set. The extreme rollers, uh, G boost sells them. Um, dirt monkey sells them. There's a few other companies that sell them, but they're white in color. I use those for three years on my drag race machine and I've never broke one. Uh, I believe. Yep this clutch right here see how that roller is white this has extreme rollers in it this goes on my buddy jake's drag machine so that's really the only failure i see in the k and secondary is these rollers it's super common uh if you have oem rollers in your k&m hit me up here at hater maker performance uh, replace them before they break and it ruins your riding trip this is the best thing Polaris secondaries. I already touched on this one. This is the secondaries on these Pro XP seem pretty good, but when that primary explodes, it usually takes this out, and they're both junk, and the housing's junk, and everything. 
Uh, I recommend also, if you want to get with me, we'll switch it over to this style of clutch, but not a China slave labor clutch like this one. This one's not good. Good for a spare to get you off the trail. That's about the extent of what I would do with that. Uh, Polaris NA1000 clutches. This is an earlier one. 2014 and 2015 of these used rollers right here. And then they went away from that and they, they went to square pucks, which is terrible. It wears the clutch terrible. They wear crooked and funny. A lot of people replace these with rollers. If you get a mother clutch or secondary, they all come with rollers. Uh, but even rollers can fail. You can see right here, that one's flat spotted. This one's just old. It had a bunch of miles on it, worn out. See right there, that one's got a big flat spot. So those weren't rolling very good. Uh, if you have one of these clutches, at least upgrade the rollers. Or hit me up here, I can do it for you. Uh, I recommend just putting a set of mother clutches on them if they're wore out every, depending on how you drive. I had a Polaris General. I would whop out clutches every 2,500 miles, but I drove it really hard. Uh, if you just cruise the trails, you know, your your Polaris NA clutches could last eight, ten thousand 10,000 miles. Uh, definitely not when you drive like an idiot like me. But So there's that. That's the common failures we see there. Other than that, these are good secondaries. I mean, everything wears out. These things get super hot. These are basically a snowmobile design. That's what all this stuff was designed for. And now you're putting it on a, you know, a 2,000 pound machine and run it in the summer and the heat and the dirt and all that. And it, you know, it's going to wear out. So best thing I can tell anybody is to pull your belt cover and to blow your clutches out after every ride. Get all the belt dust, the junk, and then inspect them. Spin them around. Look for flattened rollers. Look for broken rollers. Look for weights that have a big old groove in them. Just look everything over. Get a flashlight out. Spin them all around. It can save you a ton of money when something really comes apart and blows both of your clutches and your housing and your belt and everything up. That gets expensive quick. So, that's what I got for the stock clutches as far as K&M Polaris. I wish I had a K&M primary here. There is some stuff that wears out in those, but they're usually fixable and they'll work. I've not had good luck rebuilding these Polaris clutches just put a new one on it whether it be an oem or a mother clutcher don't buy a cheap one a super cheap one uh, the mother clutchers are way better priced i sell these here and they also have a one-year warranty which even the oem clutch does not i'll show you the updated design here in a minute uh, we'll go over here to the billet clutches stm clutch this is a michigan company united states company they make some badass racing clutches uh I just, I've seen them wear out and lock on the crank to where you have to cut them off. Uh, every clutch has its issues. The tap clutch is the same. This is the new generation. I'll show you that and what they changed there for the issues that they had. Uh, but these are a good clutch. I would not put either one of these expensive billet high dollar clutches on an NA Polaris uh, like this machine. Either one of these stock machines really uh, like that xp 1000 right there it's it's just way too much clutch for that you don't need it it's the wearables are still going to wear out just as fast if not faster than a, an oem or a mother clutcher to be honest with you and now you've got a wore out really expensive clutch uh if you go to super high horsepower super high engagement like the drag race and stuff then you need this this clutch right here is it's set up to engage at about 6,000 rpm uh, and, and at that point, this machine will probably be making like 35 pounds of boost when I let go of the button, uh, you know, somewhere close to 400 horsepower. So, uh, you definitely want a strong billet clutch when you're doing that. Let's talk about some of the issues that the tap clutch has had. This is the new tap roller. Uh, tap had some issues. I never did with mine. I raced on one of these for two years in an open belt case, no cover on it. And I drove it all over town. I'd drive it out here in the trails a little bit to the sand hill. Uh, I always took it apart and blew it out and, and kept maintenance on it. But one thing they would do was they would stick here. It had slider pucks, just like these clutches do here. You see that little puck that slides on the rail right there. This one does. 
there's a little puck in here that just slides right there. You can see the mark where it slides. Uh, they were hanging up there. Uh, so this clutch actually has rollers in it. If you look right there, that's the bolt that holds the roller in there. And this clutch slides super easy. This was way easier than my old tap clutch, the way this thing just, it's pretty sweet. Can't wait to try it out. So the action on this clutch is much better. You don't have to put near as much weight in this clutch to get it to do what you want now because the action on it's so smooth. Another thing Tap was having problems with on the original ones, again, I never had this problem, but if you didn't maintain them, they would. Uh, the bushing would swell or that, that bearing would get stuck on the bushing and it would stick there. Now they have, looks like a DLC coated bearing. I think they increased the bushing clearance a little bit. Uh, the way this works is really sweet. But again, this is nearly a $3,000 clutch. This is not necessary for your average 100 horsepower trail machine. This is, I mean, if you want to just blow money like that, that's fine. Get with me. I can sell you one. Uh, but I don't, I don't recommend that or that for a regular old 100 horsepower trail machine. Pick up something like... I'll show you the new generation of mother clutcher or just get an OEM. I wouldn't even get an OEM one of these though. The Pro XP clutch, I'm just not a fan of this. I don't know if this was a fault of the clutch yet. Like I said, I've got to figure out what was banging around in there, but obviously there was something banging around in there a lot. I don't see any missing bolts in the housing or anything, but I've got to investigate this. But these, these crack and then they blow up. Uh, blows your whole housing up, blows your secondary up. It's tons of money. Uh, get with me if you want to swatch it, swap it over to this style clutch, the older style turbo clutch. I'll go over here to these machines and show you a few things. <coughs> this is a 2015 XP1000. Uh, I put a mother clutch on this. It was actually, I think, the original clutch I took off of it. It had a date of 2015 on it. And the secondary was still good. Like, I didn't see any flat spots in the rollers or anything. This is the new Mother Clutcher. They have their own castings now. That same Mother Clutcher there. It also says Mother Clutcher in there. And the basket and the spider. These... I've not had any problems with these. And I've been doing Mother Clutcher secondaries for a while. They already come with the rollers. These seem to be pretty good. I'm really happy with these. Uh, these are half of the money of an OEM clutch. So, super impressed with that so far. Um, I'm gonna do start looking at more of their turbo stuff. I've never even dealt with one of their X3 clutches. I have no idea what those are about. Uh, but for these 1000 NA Polaris, uh, these newer mother clutches right here with all the their own castings, these seem to be pretty good. I'm digging it. Uh, they're easier to get. They're a better warranty, and they're half the money of an OEM Polaris. So, again, come see me at Hater Maker Performance in St. Helen, Michigan, or give me a call 517-375-2188. We can pretty much do anything with clutching, not just Polaris and Can-Am. We can do anything. Uh, I have not gotten into pro r clutching much i have one here but it's not for any clutching issues uh, so i'm going to be getting into those probably pretty soon i do want to get into figuring out uh i mean i've seen i've seen the clutches i've done belts on them but i've not done any clutching or had the clutches apart so looking forward to that but yep like i said another beautiful day here in St. Helen, Michigan, it's a weekday, so there's not side-by-sides going by every 10 seconds, but. Come on and see me. Hey, to make a performance. Exit 222 off I-75, St. Helen, Michigan. Thank you.